Okay, we're going to try something a little different today on my YouTube channel. And I'm going to read this story to you guys. I'm going to read one chapter at a time, probably. So, chapter one. The beginning of adventures. Once there were 13 amigos who lived in a small town called Viberg. Their names were Mariah, Stephanie, Allison, Tanner, Quinn, Ryan, Gus, Erica, Melissa, Sydney, Holly, Kristen, and Brittany. Quinn and Ryan were twin brothers, but they looked nothing alike. They were all around 16 years old. Most of them had known each other for much of their lives, but after they had taken a Spanish class together, they started hanging out together as a group more. One hot summer day, Ryan decided they should all go do something fun, so he sent out the group text to all the amigos. Meet me at Swan Pond. Let's go swimming. All the amigos had been bored, so they blew up his phone and each other's phones, texting back things like, count me in, and I'll be there. Within the hour, the 13 amigos stood on the little beach, all ready to go swimming. The floating dock, not far offshore, beckoned them. With shouts and laughter, they all rushed into the water and swam out to the floating dock to play. While they were busy diving off the dock and pushing each other off the dock and swimming around and under the dock, they didn't notice that the dock had come loose from its anchor and was floating out to the middle of the pond. The pond had two small islands in the middle of it, one bigger than the other. As the dock floated up to the bigger island, the amigos started to notice because the water got shallow and the bottom of the pond was full of big rocks instead of the mud that it had near the shore. Just about the time that they began to notice that they had floated over to the island, they started to hear a strange noise coming from the middle of the island. It sounded like a cross between the wind blowing in the trees and the flapping of very large wings. There was also a faint musical sound, like a beautiful song heard from very far away. The amigos looked at each other with big round eyes and fell silent wondering what could possibly make, be making such a noise on such a small island so packed with trees that they didn't know how anything could even get into the center of the island. They had to know. With quiet splashes, the ones who had been on the dock slipped into the water, and they all, with much difficulty, climbed up the large rocks to the shore of the island. The boys went in amongst the trees first, but the girls were following close on their heels. After some squeezing between the trees, carefully watching where they put their bare feet to avoid pain, they were surprised to come to a tiny clearing in the middle of the small island. But in the minuscule clearing stood a large portal, one that reminded them of the ones on Stargate, from which the mysterious sound emanated. Beside the portal, a man who appeared to have been waiting for them sat on the ground. He was dressed very simply in jeans and a white t-shirt, and he wore no shoes. As he stood up to meet them, they saw that his skin was tan, and he had, sho had shoulder-length brown hair and a brown beard. They all stopped short and stared. The man smiled and extended his hand to them. "'I'm Josh,' he said simply. In a daze of disbelief at what they were seeing, they each shook his hand and said hi. You have all been chosen to go on a little adventure today, Josh continued, as he took a little notebook out of his shirt pocket and looked at it. You are not all going to the same place, but you have been di divided into groups for your adventures. Ryan, Tanner, Gus, and Quinn, you are up first. The boys looked at each other with questions in their eyes. Silently, they all agreed that they were too curious to run or pass up this adventure. They had to know what this was about. Stepping forward, they came near to the portal with a strange mixture of curiosity and fear of the unknown producing butterflies in their stomachs. Taking a deep breath in unison, they looked at each other and walked forward into the portal. The girls all gasped when the boys disappeared from sight. I can't believe we're really going to do this, Erica whispered to Melissa. I don't know if we should, Melissa whispered back. But how will we ever explain to the parents what the, where the boys went if this is all we know, Stephanie whispered to Erica and Melissa. Meanwhile, <laughs> Holly was walking around and around the portal, freaking out about how the boys had just disappeared like that and asking where they had gone. Calm down, Holly, Brittany hollered at Holly. It's an adventure, like on TV. Maybe we're just dreaming or something. 
Josh smiled and continued as if everything was normal. Looking at his little notebook, he read the next names. Mariah, Allison, and Brittany. It looks like you are next. You aren't even going to tell us where we're going? Mariah asked Josh. No. Knowing where you're going ahead of time is not part of this adventure, Josh replied. Then how do we know that we want to go? Mariah asked. Josh shrugged his shoulders. I can tell you it's going to be good, he offered. Mariah looked at Allison and Brittany. They shrugged their shoulders too, but in the end they decided to trust Josh's assessment that it would be good because by now they were really curious too. Also, there was something about Josh that made them feel like he was someone who could be trusted. So they grabbed each other's hands and stepped forward through the portal, disappearing from sight as well. By now, Holly's curiosity was getting the best of her, and she asked Josh if she was in the next group. Josh chuckled and nodded. Reading the next names out of his notebook, he said, Holly, you are going with Kristen and Sydney. Sydney looked at Holly like, are you crazy? But Holly talked her into it. Soon, Holly, Kristen, and Sydney stood in front of the portal with their arms linked. One, two, three, Holly said. And on three, they all stepped through the portal as well. This left only Erica, Melissa, and Stephanie huddled together and staring in disbelief at the fact that every one of their friends had chosen to go through this mysterious portal into heaven only knew what. Well, we can't go home now, Stephanie stated. We have no way to explain the disappearance of ten of our closest friends. Are we all insane? exclaimed Erica. Apparently, answered Melissa. Fine, Erica shouted, grabbing Melissa and Stephanie's hands and stepping up to the portal. This had better be good, she said to Josh. Josh smiled, nodded, and waved goodbye. Then the last of the group walked through the portal.